the snap action allows you to store track and or device settings into a clip for later recall. And I've got some examples of the default snap action here. This will store the volume, pan, and send settings of the track, as well as the settings of the first device on the track. All right, so the first example here will apply to the track the X clip is on. To store the settings, I'll just play the clip, and then I can change the settings around a bit, and whenever I like, I can recall the snap. The next example will store the settings for the track named FX2. All right, so again, play the clip to store the snap, change the settings around, and whenever I like, I can recall the snap. The next two are examples of storing multiple tracks. All right, so the first one here will store uh, the settings of tracks one through three. And then the last example here will store the settings of all the tracks in the set, and that includes the returns and the master track as well. As I said before, by default, the snap action will store the volume, pan, and send settings of the track, as well as the settings of the first device on the track. You can change that by using modifiers in the action name, and I've got some examples of that here. The first example, dev, will store the settings of whichever device you specify. Uh, device 2 in this case is going to be EQ8. The next example, dev all, will store the settings of all the devices on the track. Mix will store the volume, pan, and send settings. Mix Plus will store volume, pan, and sends, as well as uh, mute, solo, and crossfade assignment. The next example, Play, is a little bit different. This will store the playing status of tracks. So to show you this, I'm going to launch some clips. All right, then store the snap, and then I can launch a different set of clips, and whenever I like, I can go back to that Play snap again. The last one here is an example of using multiple modifiers. In this case, this is going to store the settings of all the devices on the track, as well as the Mix Plus settings. By default, when you recall a snap, the values of the parameters are going to jump from their current values to the stored values. So it's an abrupt change, and in some cases you might not want that. You might want a more gradual change. So to accomplish that, you can insert a track named CliffX Snap. This will function just like any other track, with two exceptions. It won't be included in snaps, and it has some special functionality when it comes to recalling snaps. So to show you that, I'm just going to drag over these snaps I've already stored. And you can see now that when I recall them from here, the recalled was smoothing. So it's now a gradual change. All right, you can also change the speed at which the smoothing occurs at by adding the speed at the end of the track name in brackets. So here we'll try 15, which will slow the smoothing down a little bit. You can also recall snaps with morphing, which is basically blending between the current values and the stored values. To do that, insert a rack on this track named CliffX Snap. All right, now when you recall snaps, instead of being recalled with smoothing, they're going to get sent to the snap rack. From here, you can use the first macro on the snap rack to morph between the current values and the stored values. If at any point you want to go back to recalling snaps with smoothing, just turn this rack off.